Hello friends, welcome back to another Find Your Einstein Friday video. Einstein's is Nelly, and today I'm going to show you another super fun experiment. Have you ever created your own slime? Well, what if I told you today you'll be making slime that is magnetic? Today, we're going to learn about magnetism and matter. First, let's talk about matter. All matter, everything in our world, can be classified into three common groups. There are solids, liquids, and gases. You know something is solid because they don't have a fixed shape and volume, meaning they don't change shape and you can't put your hand through it. Some examples are tables, rocks, paper, hair, and ice. Liquids can normally be poured. They feel wet and you can put your hand through them. Liquids are said to change shape, but not volume. Some examples are water, juice, milk, and oil. Unlike solids and liquids, gases change shape and volume. They move freely in all directions, taking the shape and volume of their container. Most gases are invisible. The air we breathe is a mix of different gases, like oxygen, carbon dioxide, and nitrogen. Today, we're going to make slime, which is a weird kind of matter that doesn't fit neatly into solids, liquids, and gases. It seems to pour or run like a liquid, but much more slowly than water. So what is it? Because it doesn't seem to follow Isaac Newton's definitions of the three states of matter, we call slime a non-Newtonian matter. Any type of matter that doesn't quite fit as a solid, liquid, or a gas falls into this broad group. Other examples of strange non-Newtonian matter are jelly, blood, toothpaste, ink, and glue. Now magnets, what are they? They're objects that can exert an invisible force called magnetism, which pulls on certain metals. Can you think of any examples? Do magnets work on soda cans? Did you know the whole earth is also a magnet? The extreme heat of the inner core creates convection currents in the molten iron of the earth's outer core. The movement of the iron creates an electric current, which in turn creates a magnetic field. Magnets are used in refrigerators, computers, and medical devices. A piece of medical equipment called a magnetic resonance imaging machine, also known as an MRI, uses a powerful magnetic field to generate a radar-like radio signal from inside the body. Using this signal, the machine creates a clear, detailed pictures of bones, organs, and other tissue. An MRI magnet is very strong, thousands times more powerful than common kitchen magnets. In today's experiment, we will make a non-Newtonian matter that is magnetic. We'll see if our magnetic slime works by using a magnet to pull the slime. Let's get started. You will need a quarter cup of white school glue, two tablespoons of iron oxide powder, an eighth cup of liquid starch, a neodymium rare earth magnet, a mixing bowl, a rubber scraper, your measuring cup, and your measuring spoons. Oh, and you should probably use gloves because it gets a little messy. And don't forget your safety goggles. Neodymium magnets are extremely strong. Fingers can easily get pinched when trying to separate the magnets. Please be sure to keep the magnets away from cell phones, computer, and other electronics. Also, Make sure to have adult supervision when trying out any of these experiments. Some helpful tips for you. Have all your supplies ready before you start. Clear your surrounding surface area. Use your safety goggles. And as mentioned before, you should have adult supervision. This is a good time to put your gloves on before we get started with the messy part. Step one, pour a quarter cup of your white glue into your mixing bowl. You may have to use the spoon to scrape all the glue out of the measuring cup. Step two, add two tablespoons of the iron oxide powder into your bowl and stir well. 
Look at this. The iron oxide powder is so attracted to my magnet. The iron oxide powder is what makes the slime magnetic because it has little bits of iron and iron filings. Step three, pour in an eighth of a cup of liquid starch. This is non-Newtonian matter. This next part is going to get super messy. If you're not using gloves, it helps to wash your hands before playing with the slime. Step four is to knead the slime with your hands. If your slime is too sticky, gluey, you can knead a tiny bit more starch, which is what I'm going to do. Those of you who have been watching carefully will have noticed I didn't have my safety goggles on, but now I do. Now that we have our sign ready to go, let's try it out and see if it works with our neodymium magnet. Because neodymium magnets are so strong, you need to be careful when using two together. They're much, much stronger than regular magnets. You don't want to get pinched in the middle due to the powerful magnet. Neodymium magnets are rare earth magnets made from neodymium, iron, and boron, and they create a powerful magnetic field. The slime will only react to a neodymium magnet and will not work with ordinary magnets. Let's try a few tricks. Let's see if the slime will rise and follow our magnet. What happens if we put the magnet in the slime? Whoa, it swallowed it whole. Why does the slime pull towards the magnet? By adding a ferrous component, the iron oxide powder, we can keep all characteristics of the awesome slime, but now have the additional dimension of magnetism. Ferromagnetism is a phenomenon that occurs in some metals, most notably iron, cobalt, and nickel, that causes the metal to become magnetic. The atoms in these metals have an extra unpaired electron, and when the metal is exposed to a sufficiently strong magnetic field, these extra electrons spin and line up parallel to each other. Well, that's it for today's episode of Find Your Einstein Friday. Follow me, Scientist Nelly, as I share more interesting and fun science. Until next time. <laughs>